Hello everybody, so today I will talk about the fission because the fission will be appear many times on the test so I will concentrate about the fission What, what about the definition of the fission? I will write right now Let's see about the basic information about the definition of the fission. Let's see about the resistance of one object to another. For example, we have the crowd, we have the table in here, and we have the object in here. So when we move the object on the right, so we will have the fission in here. On, on the opposite side of the force so we call this this one is about the fission because the fission they want to reduce the speed and the force of the object so we have the fission in here the formula of the fission is about Here, let's see the formula of the fission. We know that this is about mu. We say about mu. This one about the force. In here, we can say what that. We call them that's about coefficients of coefficient of fission, and uh, the most important we need to know that this one they don't have the unit. For example, the coefficient of the force is about zero or three, but they don't have the unit on the next one. And in here, if we want to calculate the friction, we just have the force 500 newton per second. So the friction is about we multiply with the force is about 0 over 3 multiply with 500. So the force of the the friction of force is about. One hundred fifteen newton. So that if we apply two force together, because the friction of force is the opposite side of the force, so the force in a normal is about five hundred minus one hundred fifty. So we got about 350 newton. So that's why we need to remember the all information. But that's about definition of friction, the formula of the friction, and uh, the coefficient of friction. They don't have the unit. And they ask, what is the unit of coefficient of friction? We have A, B, C, D. We know that coefficient of the friction, they don't have the unit. So the answer for this question is about B. Find the frictional force of the 100 kilogram car and moves on the road with V equal to 0 0.2. So we have the formula. In here we don't find the Newton but we know that in the Newton we have M multiplied with G this is about the Newton because we know M multiplied with G is about N 
So we just apply the formula. Mu is about 0 volt M is about 100 kilogram. And she is about 9 volt A. So after we calculate everything, we just multiply together and we got about 196 newton. And this this one is about eight. As far they will ask, which of the following that can get least friction? We have A, B, C, D. So we need to analyze the situation and we need to find which one is the least. This means uh, the lowest. A driving on the right road. You know that when we ride on the right road, they don't have the water. This means uh, they still have some sand maybe about the dust. This one can create more friction between uh, the road and the, the tire of the car. So this one is not correct. Moving the object on the round, just like we move the object in here. And uh, we move somewhere else. This one is to create more the friction between uh, the object and the round. So this is not correct. Skating on the IC part, this one is correct because on the IC part, you don't have the friction between uh, the skating and the eyes because the eye can create so many factors on the part. So this one is correct. The next one using the brake. We know that when we have ride the car and we use the brake to stop the car, this one can create more the friction between the tire and the, the road. So this is not correct. So the answer for this question is about C. So the next one we can talk about the compression. What's the compression? I will write the definition. So the basic the definition of compression that's about the usage of force to put more pressure on the other object. For example, we have the cylinder. We have the cylinder like this, we have the air inside. If we have brush the bottom in here from right to left, the air will be string together. So in here, the air, the volume in here will reduce because we press the air inside the cylinder therefore the pressure in here that will go up let's see about the spring so we have the spring in here So let's say in the normal state right now, we push the object, go to the left. So that the spring on the next one, they will reduce. And uh, in here, we use the force to convert the spring more smaller. And that's why we have Compress on the spring, and the formula for this one is about so the formula for this the spring is about F equal to K multiplied with S, K is about the 
string constant uh, this is about a given number that we will call you has the about the meter the meter in here is about the distance about the, the normal string to another location for example the normal string is about in here so after we press the distance in here is about s s is about the difference between uh, the normal style of the string and the new location of the string so that we have the formula k multiplied with s in the end we have m multiplied with 3 m is about the weight of the object let's say this object 3 is about gravity so in conclusion we have the formula m multiplied with 3 equal to k multiplied with s this one is important for the spring and uh, they will ask the formula what is the compression of the spring and you will apply the, this formula and you get the high score on the aspas if we compress the air inside the cylinder so we have a b c d and uh, we need to find the find the answer key in here so a air reduce the pressure this is not correct because when we compress more air, then we will increase more pressure. This is not correct. Air increase more pressure. This is correct because we compress. The volume will reduce. So, so that's it correct because when we compress, the air is smaller, the volume. So that's B and C correct. So we choose it. So today I will talk about the balance, the force. This is on the test, and we need to understand how to balance the force on the left and on the right. So we put two objects on the two side, and we have the ten pounds and the five pounds. The distance between the central is about five meter for the ten pounds and the ten meter for the five pounds. The formula to balance the options is about the the weight is about m multiplied with d so we have m1 d1 equal to m2 d2 so that because we need to balance so the both sides should be the balance or equal sign here for example we have the 5 meter in here we have the 10 pound and the, on the right side we have 5 pounds, we have 10, so that both sides is about 50. So we need to learn how to do the balance force because they will ask about the order of check and the, the, the distance on the right side, but they ask about to calculate the weight or maybe calculate the distance. So on the next one, I will show the weight of M1. We have A, B, C, D, and they have the diagram for you. So in here, to calculate the weight, we have the formula. M multiplied with the D equal to M1 multiplied with D1. So in here, we have five is about the distance between uh, the center to this object we multiply with the weight with 20 grams we have m1 is about 20 we have no we have d1 is about 20 and then we have m1 is about this one so we have a formula and uh, we just find the m1 by 20 multiplied with 5 divided by 20 so that we got about 5 grams and the answer for this print is 12a the next one 
what is the weight of M1? Here it is about M1. And uh, in this one, we have two objects. Let's see, 5 grams and 20 grams. Let's see, a, li a little bit different. But we can calculate about that. So in here, we need to pile the first on both sides. And we have 5 grams and 5 centimeters. And we have 20 grams and 10 centimeters. So we have M B plus M B. We have two objects, so we have two two multiplication, and this one is about M one multiplied with B one. So just apply this. So we have five centimeter with the five rounds, so we have five multiplied with five. And we have 10 centimeter and 20 grams. So we have 20 multiplied with 10. And uh, we have M1 in here, we don't know. And B1 here about 15. After we input the formula in here, we just calculate M1 in the equation. 5 multiplied with 5 is about 20. 20 multiplied with 10 is, is about 200. M1 multiplied with 15. So that on the left side is about 225. M1 multiplied with 15. So we just divide both sides with 15. It got about M1 is about 225 divided by 15 equal to 15 grams. So that after we calculate everything, the answer for this question is about C. And we will talk about the tensions. Tension uh, is like the pull of the object through the chain string string or maybe about the spring. For example, we have the ceiling, we have the one object in here, 10 meter. We know that if we put the object like this, we have the gravity, but on the top one, we have the tension. We call them, let's say by capital T, let's say by the tension, and in here, the the gravity equals the tension of the string or about the chain of the string. So the formula for this one is about C equal to N multiplied with G. We know that for example we have 10 newton, so the the tension for the string is still equal to 10 newton. And the uh, gravity force in here is about 10 newton too. So this is so important, and we can we will learn about inclined plane. Inclined plane. They will ask about the tension between uh, one object move on the inclined plane with the object in the string on here. I will talk later on the next chapter. So we must to know about the tension, the pull of the object through the chain, spring, and the spring. The question they will ask, as tension is A force, D mass, C volume, D gravity. We know that the tension is the opposite side of the gravity. And this is about the force. So the answer for this question is about A. 
find the tension of this diagram, we have A, B, C, D. In here, we have 10 kilograms, and we know that the tension is about A multiplied with G. We have the, the weight is about 10 kilograms, and we have the gravity is about 9.8. Multiply together, we got about 98 Newton. So the answer for this question is about A. Find, find the tension of this diagram. So we have two screen in here. We have T1 and T2. So to find the tension of the screen in here, we have M G equal to T one and T two because we use the vector because the the direction in here they create the same direction so we have the gravity equal to T one plus T two but we have twenty kilograms in it. You multiply 9.8 and we got about 196. We have 196 Newton, but in here they divide both sides in the T1 and T2. And uh, you know that if they put the same in the 90 degrees, it means that they are 45 degrees in the both sides. Therefore, if they have the degree in the both sides are the same, it means that the tension between T1 and T2 are the same too. So that we just do 196 divided by 2, we got about 98 for each T1 and T2. So that the answer for the question in here is about a Mechanical advantage. Mechanic, mechanical advantage will be appear many times on the test. And uh, that's about the ratio of reduced force and applied force. So we have the formula MA equal to force L divided by force in. So this is about the formula about mechanical advantage. For example, we we carry the object but we need about force only 120 newton but we just apply only 30 newton to carry so if we use the MA we have force out is about 120 divide for force is about 30 so mechanical advantage is about 4 so that's why we just use the basic formula for mechanical advantage. That's why we will talk about the symbol machine. So I will put in the level, level 1, 2, and 3. This 1, 2, and 3 will be on the asphalt test, and we need to understand what's in level 1, 2, and 3. So the level number 1, we have the fulcrum. The fulcrum is about the central is about the center of the airport and load in the level one. For example, we have the sea stop. For example, a children of a child, a child sit on the load and a, a second child sit on the other side of the sea stop. If the first child they push the first they push the first on the right of the seesaw and the try on the left they will they will up that's why we have the load and the effort in the seesaw another example is about the flyers it's mean that we have the flying
This is about for example this is flyers. We put the first in here and this is about the full throttle. And uh, we apply the force to cut the object. So the flyer, the scissors. That's same with the level number one two. The, the level number two, that's about the wheel arrow. The wheel barrel is we carry on the construction area. For example, you see how the wheel barrel and uh, the worker they carry the material inside the wheel barrel, and this is about the food comb. This one is about the load. And this one is about the effort. So you will use the wheel barrel to carry the object. So that's about level number two. Level number three, just like about for example, we have the head like this. That's about the full chrome. Full chrome. And uh, this one is about the load. This one about the effort. Because when we carry something like this, we will apply the level number three. And uh, this one can be used for the playing. Uh, uh, Baseball. For example, when we you when we play the baseball, we need to carry the bat on the hand. So we apply the load on on here, and we have use the bat on the finger and uh, the hand. So that's why we use the lever number three. So you need to find another example level 1, 2 and 3 to apply in different situations because on the test they will ask which one will be the level number 1, level number 2 and level number 3 in each object for example seesaw wheelbarrow or maybe carry the object and they will ask which of the level 1 so we have A, B, C, D you know that A, B, C are the object for you for the level number one. So that we choose D. This is about the level number one. They ask about the seesaw. If a child sits on the on one side of seesaw, second try applies the force on the other side. We have A, B, C, D. A first try will lift up, we might sit. B second try, try will bounce at up. D on train. D second try will fall out of seesaw. We know that. We know the seesaw like this. If one person apply the force, another the seesaw will go up. like this so in this question the first try will lift up and remass this is the correct one because we apply the fork in the other side the seesaw on the other side will go up and then and the other will go down so that's why we choose a is a correct answer of the seesaw so the next one we will talk about the symbol machine so in here we will talk about three basic symbol machine first that's about wedge incline length or we call about slide and about the pulleys in in this one we need to know, understand about mechanical mechanical advantage formula 
So about the wedge, we have length divided by width, and uh, we know that the length should be on the vertical, and the width is about the horizontal, and uh, that's why we have the mechan mechanical advantage here about the length divided by, by width. And this is important. You need to know the formula and the structure of the wedge. The next one is about inclined plane. In the inclined plane, we need to know the height and the length. And uh, we have a mechanical advantage here about the length divided by height. Be careful, everybody. In the wedge, in this one, the length it should be about the vertical. But the length in the inclined plane is to be the horizontal. So this one is so different. And then they can make the mistake in here. The next one is about the poly. In here, in the poly, that's the, a little bit different. We have mechanical advantage. It's equal about the total of the poly. For example, there are five poly in here. And uh, we have the output divided by input. Output is about the 50 newton. And we know the input in here should be about 10 newton. Because the total pulley in here is about 5 pulley. 5 pulley, yeah. So because they have the 5 pulley, so the MA is about equal 5. Then uh, we have the output is about 50 and it must be about 10. So in the poly, a little bit different between uh, the wedge and the inclined plane. So we, have, we must remember that MA is equal about the total of pulleys in the structure in here divided by output uh, equal to output divided by input. This one is so important, and we need to learn that they can be confused between uh, the formula in here, and we must remember and understand how to apply the formula in different situations. This one is wheel and axle. They use for the well. Moreover, this one can use on the door knot too. Uh, we will ask first, they will ask the wedge has 10 meter on in length and 2 meter in width. What's the mechanical advantage? We have ABCD. In here, we have MA equal to the length divided by width. So the length in here is about 10. And the width is about 2. So MA should be about 5. And the answer for this question is about 8. What's the mechanical advantage of inclined plane? In here, we have MA equal by length divided by height. So in here we have the length is about 5 and the height is 10. 5 divided by 10 is about 0 0.5. So MA is about 8. What is the symbol of inclined plane? A grade, B slide, C stair, D waterfall. So if we learn about inclined plane, so we can do about the slide. The next question, what's the MA in this structure? So in here, we know that we have three pulleys in here. Because we have three pulleys in here, so the answer for this question is about B. What's the MA in this stru structure? So in here, in the question, they are uh, one the tricky. 
we say there are four bullets. One, two, three, four. But the string in here, they don't hit on the bullet because the string, this one, they hit on the top, this one on the below of the bullet and the top. But this one, uh, they don't uh, hit on uh, the bullet because if the string uh, hit on bullet, they don't have a force for affect to this bullet. So the answer for this question is about the to make sure that when you see the string like this, this bullet will not count. We just count the bullet when uh, the string uh, attach on on the pulley and uh, they can uh, move together so that the answer is about B when uh, the string uh, they just go through this pulley but they don't have the force to affect to this pulley so that we don't count the MA in here they just, we just count and when uh, the string and the pulley they can create the tension and create the gravity so we just count on that be careful this is the hardest can be the tricky on the asphalt what's the effort in this structure so we have load in here is about 10 newton but we have the formula So the formula is about MA equal to effort divided by load. In here, we have the load is 10. And we have three pulley in here. So we, MA it should be three effort. So to calculate the efforts, we do three multiply with 10 is about 13 newton so the answer for this question is about b how many pulleys in lock and tackle lock and tackle just like this this is the way they use the block and tackle they put the stringer one in the first pulley and two string together on the second pulley so they can uh, move in here the object so how many pulleys in block and tackle the answer in this question is about b oh, in this question what is the real object for us and wheel we have a b c d and uh, in the question you know the picture of the ass and the wheel so to to do that, that's it about answer A. But the record form is about like this. The pulley should be like this. The wedge, the wedge is about like this. So, so that they don't relate it to us and the wheel. So the answer for this question is about A. We talk about the gears. This is will appear on the asphalt test. They will ask like, if we rotate A, which one will be counter clockwise and half clockwise? For example, if we if we use the block Y on the gear A, we can see that the gear A will have the gear in here. They hit the gear B in here on the top one. For example. And this one will be the counter block one. We know that counter block one will hit the gear B C. So this one will be block one. So that we need to know which one is the block one and counter block one. The next one uh, that's that's we talk about the ratio between the T and the revolution. For example, we have two gears in here. 
and we have the ratio between T1 and T2. T1, the big one, and T2 is the small one. T2, T1 is about 80, and the T2 is about 40. However, the big one uh, they have the revolution is about 20. So that we can calculate the revolution number two, this small one. So we have 20 multiplied with 8 divided by 4. So the revolution of the T number 2 is about 40. So we need to apply this formula because on the test they ask about the T1 and T2 and they ask about revolution of the object. If here A has 10 T, here B has 5 T and the revolution is 50 in the big one, what is the revolution in the small one? So we have here A and here B. So in here we have here A is about 10 T. We divide by 5. However, about revolution, they are sweet together. So the revolution in the big one is 10. So this is in the denominator. So that to calculate the revolution of the small one, we just use 10 multiplied with 50. Divide by 5. So the answer for the question mark in here is about 100. So the answer for this question is about 8. When we will talk about the heat. In this abstract, we just learned about three topics about the heat. That's about contract, air, Dispatch air and how fast of transfer So on the aspect we just learned about contract air, expand air, and how fast to up transfer the heat in the material. So in here we will learn about three topics in here. About contract air, we must know that this is about to uh, reduce the heat. For example, we have the two in it and we have the straw. In the straw, we have the liquid. With the contract air, we reduce the heat. This means that we reduce the temperature. So that's the air inside the two. The two they will shrink because the air inside the two is shrink. So the liquid on the straw they will go down. So that we call them. This is about contract air. This means uh, the temperature is reducing and uh, the the volume of the air they will shrink together. If you want to explain the air, this means uh, we need to increase the heat. This means that the temperature will go up. And in here, they will expand uh, the air. If the air is thin, so that the volume in the tube, they will go up and the liquid on in this straw in here they will go up to 
This means that the liquid layer will go to from the bottom to the top. That's why we expand the air inside the tube. The next one. On the aspect, they will ask which material they can transfer the mist fast and slow. We know that the object they transfer the fastest heat, that's about the metal. Then later that study about the wood. Then uh, the water. Then the air. So that you just learn uh, these four materials like this. Metal, wood, water and air. Which one transferring the heat is the fastest, so that's about the metal. One can transfer the heat to the end of object, it means the fastest transferring uh, the heat. So we have A, the silver spoon, B, the wooden pencil, C, the glass ruler, D, the water. In here, we know that the silver is about the metal. And we know that the metal is the fastest in the transfer of the heat. So the answer for question is about A. What is true about the contract air? We have A, B, C, D. We know that in the contract air, the heat they will reduce so that the temperature they will reduce. Therefore, which what is the true about the contract air? It means the temperature is cooler. So that's about the answer B. The next one we will talk about the pressure and the definition of the pressure is about Let's say the force applied by any cooler with the surface of object. For example, we have the surface in it. We have the object. This object they have the gravity applied for the force. Let's say about the gravitational force on the this surface, and we know that this surface will have the pressure because the force applied by any cooler on the surface. And that's why we have the pressure on the surface. So the formula for the pressure is about F is about force, I is about area. So that we have the formula, the pressure is F divided by I. I will ask what is the pressure of 100 kilograms on the surface 10 multiplied with 10? We have B equal to F divided by A. That is the basic formula. In the F, we have A multiplied with 3 divided by A. So that we have the M is about 100. We multiply 9.8 for the gravity divided by A in here is about 10 multiplied with 10. So we have 9.8 Newton per square meter. So the answer for question is about A. Flexibility. Flexibility is about let's 
talking about the bending of object. For example, we have the ruler and we bend uh, the ruler in here. After that, the ruler they come back to the normal state. That's why we call them is about flexibility. It means that after we bend in the object, the object going back to the normal state. That's why we call them about the flexibility. This is on the definition. And uh, we need to understand the concept and uh, how to understand the flexibility on the object. That's it. They mentioned about fluid dynamics. They just mentioned about only one formula. This is about V1, S1, V2, S2. This is the basic formula of the fluid dynamics. I will show you about it. So in here, we have V1, that's the velocity of the V1. S1 is about the cross section of the area. The area of the cross section of the V1. V2 in here. And the S2 is about the area of the cross section of number 2. So in here, I will explain what is that. In here, we have the water. They go from left to right. And uh, in this as class, they just mentioned this formula. For example, if V1 is about 10 meter per second, and the area of the S1 in the cross section of this one is about 5, Met square meter and uh, then this location for example we have the area of this one is about 20 square meter so that's the velocity of the V2 is about 1 it means that no Five. That's about two point five. And uh, to explain this formula, if the area of the v v one is too small, the velocity is going up. If the the area of the S two is bigger than S one, the velocity will go down. So that they have some relationship in here of the fluid dynamics. This formula is so important because they illustrate about the speed and the, the flow of the liquid in the pipe. For example, the small pipe, they have the highest velocity. With, in the big pipe, the velocity will go down. So because on the big pipe, more water they go in through this area. That's why the velocity they will go in there. But the small by too many water they going at the same time that's why the velocity will go up and uh, this one just only one in the fluid dynamics the last one that's about Pascal's law they do about hydraulic and uh, most of them they will do for the whole tool or maybe about the boom Or maybe they can use about the brake. This one will be on the test and we need to learn what is the Pascal's law and the formula. So we have the two, there are two objects in here. We have F1 and F2, area 2, 
uh, area of one, area of two, D one and D two. We know that the pressure in here will be same the pressure in here because when we put the force in the number one and we receive the force number two, it will press down and uh, in the number two they will go up. That's why the flow of the hydraulics in here they will send. That's why we have P1 equal P2. So the formula of the pressure is about M1 divided by A1 equal to F2 divided by A2. So that when we sweep A and F together, we will got about F1 divided by F2 equal to the area A1 divided by A2. Now, the D1, D1 is, uh, is about the distance. If we press the one, number one go to hit, they call about D1. And uh, the number two will go up the new location. In here, we call the value D2. And we know that when uh, D1 will go up, D2 go in a little bit. And uh, we have the ratio. D1 divided by D2 equal to F2 divided by F1 because F1 divided F1 multiplied with D1 is equal to D2 multiplied with F2 because they have the relationship on the distance and the force. So that we have the formula in here and the formula in here so we can write the three ratio together we have F1 divided by F2 equal to A1 divided by A2 equal to D, D2 divided by D1 so that we have the formula in here and the ratio of the three ratio with the force area and the distance so that in the Pascal law, you need to understand about the, this object and the formula to calculate everything. The real asphalt, they will provide a diagram. And uh, what is the output force if we reach about 100 newton and put down 2 meters, the output will go up 1 meter. So in here, we just apply the ratio that we just show, I just show for you. We have F1 divided by F2 equal to D2 divided by D1. So they ask about the output force, that's about F number two. So we just switch everything we have f1 multiplied d1 divided by d2 so in here we have the force about 100 newton we multiply with the d1 let's see by 2 and divide by 1 let's see by our here go up 1 meter so that after we multiply and divide together we got about 200 newton so the answer for the question is about a so if we open the boom in here which will be happened a the liquid will go to a b the liquid will go to b and stick C, the liquid will stop moving the none of them. So we know that we open the pump in here, the, the height of the liquid B and C, different A. You know the liquid of the A is smaller than the liquid B and C. 
on uh, the height so that the water of the height will go to the low so when we open the pump the water will go from C to A and the liquid in here they will become to the same width B and C until A, B and C the height of A, B and C are the same area so that the liquid in here they will go to the A and that's the answer A